Hello everyone, my name's Matt Johnston and welcome to the Wednesday Interesting Times which is a little bit of midweek wit of UK politics. So, following on from the rather successful, we hope, investment summit in which billions of pounds from overseas businesses was secured, Keir Starmer opened the summit with his speech. Because we're determined to lead the way on growth, determined to get Britain building, determined to get our economy moving, through the shock and awe of investment. That's the message to take home today. At which point the Japanese and Americans got into a bidding war over the technology used to create this incredible lifelike robot. There was a lot riding on the government's investment summit. Many of the business leaders who've committed £60 billion are taking it on trust that there will be no unwelcome surprises. Ooh. The Chancellor gave her clearest signal yet that she will be putting up national insurance for employers. So, are Labour going to be putting up the employer's national insurance? Hmm, don't know. It's all a little bit mysterious. Well, the manifesto was very clear in that we would not raise taxes on working people, by which we meant national insurance, income tax and VAT. This discussion, which really has emerged in the last sort of five days or so, about whether or not Labour will increase national insurance contributions for employers. And about not increasing but taxes on working, working people. people. Uh, well, look, I'm not going to speculate more widely about the budget. Um, but, you know, I can appreciate that over the next few weeks and indeed over the previous couple of weeks, there's going to be plenty of speculation about the budget. All the details will be set out in the budget on October the 30th. I sometimes feel like I'm going crazy doing these interviews. I'm asking you, does that apply to both employees and I and employers and I? You know that pledge. It was taxes on working people. So it was specifically in the manifesto a reference to employees. Yes. Yes, they are. The real question everyone wants to know, though, is does this break their manifesto pledge? The manifesto stated that Labour will not increase taxes on working people, which is why they will not increase national insurance, the basic higher or additional rates of income tax or VAT. Now, you might say the wording is ambiguous. I would disagree. All employees work, which is why they're employers. They are being paid because they are required to be there somewhere. However, not all employers work. But as we keep coming back to, maybe there's another way to get your hands on some cash. Some people are thinking, like, there's one market over here, there's another market over here. There's one way to ensure this, you know, smoother trade and simpler processes. Maybe having one market, I'm struggling to think of the word, can you help me? A sole market. A solitary market, a unique, exclusive and ready to mingle market. Why can't there be an open debate about the single market, about the customs union? Like... People have moved on, the country's moved on, the EU's moved on. They have? OK, then, don't call it Brexit. Call it something else, something like, well, I don't know, uh, a reset. Uh, oh, oh, that's brilliant. But there's no getting away from it. Brexit's been a bit crap. Do you find that regulation in the UK is, is holding you back from growing how you want to? I think we find that in almost every developed economy, including the UK. I think the difference in the UK is, you know, on, on your own now, uh, separate from Europe, it's a relatively small market. Brexit has marginalised us. It was kind of intended to do exactly that. But there have been benefits too. Um... Yeah, well, well, all right, don't rush me. Ah, yes, Simon Johnson, a dual national American British economist, has just picked up the Nobel Prize. You know, Simon Johnson. Oh, come on, Simon Johnson is the guy that said Brexit was self destructive. Yeah, okay, that's more of a reach than pretending Keir Starmer meeting Taylor Swift is news. So, why are we staying out exactly? referendum which is a democratic process we're basically going to ignore that we're going to ignore that because people sit on shows like this and they say ah oh, jez but if there was a referendum today people would say no no we're not going to do it tough we had a referendum I, I, for yes right we had a vote eight and a half years ago and we can never have another which if you remember wasn't promised at the time like locking yourself out of your house or sitting on the toilet for checking if there's paper or shaving your balls you do it once and never again so what else has been happening? Well, remember this. I still think Boris was one of our better prime ministers. Yeah. 
I see you selected the audience. And not just the BBC, but also the Tory party, as the two leadership candidates, Robert Jenrick and Kemi Bagnock, might not be taking part in a debate on the national broadcaster, the BBC, after all. The BBC and Conservative Campaign Headquarters, or CCHQ, are looking into who should make up the audience. The Beeb want half Tory voters and the other half general public. But CCHQ is understood to want all Tory voters. But the venue size for the debate is 150, so that rules that out. Oh, and the government's workers' right bill is also proving controversial. With some new part of the workers' rights bill, which apparently gives workers the right to um, complain to the boss about being offended if they're sort of front-facing in a business like hospitality. This government, I think, has has, has done some shocking things mm. to um, uh, attack free speech. But this, I think, is by far the worst. Thing. Yeah. So, for instance, if a partially sighted steward uh, at a football game overhears a fan saying to a referee, "Are you blind?" Yeah. That steward could sue the football club. Surely the fan could just say, sorry, mate, I didn't see you. Anyway, setting aside that these are incredibly specific cases, are we just asking people to be civil? You know, what we didn't have to ask people to do before the world's richest man and greatest advocate for free speech at a price decided that as long as what you say is popular, it must be true? I was on the tube the other day and I saw a poster about how you should be kind to everybody on the tube. You know, while travelling on the tube, remember to be kind. I'm like, what's that going to do with travelling on the tube? What's wrong with being kind? And kindness on the tube can mean many things, like letting people off before getting on, or moving down the carriage as far as possible to allow more people on, or offering your seat to someone who needs it more than you, or something simple, like wearing a paper bag over your head, or a plastic one. In some more disturbing news, a man was sentenced yesterday for sending Rishi Sunak a hateful racist letter. Stephen Burke, who lives in Clacton-on-Sea, hmm, why does that place sound familiar? I therefore do hereby declare that Nigel Paul Farage is duly elected as the Member of Parliament for the Clacton constituency. Ah, how is the whole cleaning up your party going, Nigel? And finally, the shadow of his former self, Paymaster General John Glenn had an urgent question yesterday. On the steps of Downing Street, on the 5th of July, the Prime Minister pledged to put country first and party second. Now, Labour, La Labour ministers have now been beset by a series of scandals. Prime Minister has claimed that this was all a perfectly sensible arrangement. Does the Right Honourable Lady still believe this? To which any sister from the same Mr Reeves' response was, really? Under the last government, the rules for ministers declaring hospitality were less, than, less transparent than for other MPs. The government will correct this imbalance. The Tory freebies loophole will be closed. In the future, the government will publish a register of minister, ministers' gifts and hospitality on a broadly equivalent basis to that which is published in the registers of members and lords' interests. This will bring publication of ministerial transparency data more closely in line with the parliamentary regime for gifts and hospitality. I'm guessing that the rest of the Tories were thinking, oh, great work, John. More scrutiny. Just what we need. I'm guessing this is why he was a little light on backing. And if that wasn't bad enough for the Tories... The sheer brass neck of it. Yeah. Yeah. On a subject like this, when they got a, when, when they set up a VIP lane for contracts during COVID, yeah. when they've accepted so many gifts which they didn't have to declare, I think my right honourable friend is absolutely right to close that loophole. But can I just turn to the honourable gentleman, right honourable gentleman, who's asking this question and point out that he refused to vote for the Privileges Committee report into. Oh. To Boris Johnson, who lied to this house. Yeah. Yeah. How is that improving standards in po political life? Yeah. What a performance. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's the look of a man complaining of a bad smell after forgetting he scrapped the bed. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you've enjoyed these videos, then feel free to like, share, subscribe, and hit all the notifications bell, and I'll see you Friday. Take care.